Hi, Robert O'Brien from O'Brien Guitars. I'm here in my shop with Mike Snyder from Snyder Guitars. He is the true expert on electric guitars. I think it's time to get started. What do you think, Mike? Let's do it. Let's design some guitars and make some sawdust. There are certainly plans out there for that that you can go by, or for a Strat or a Tele or whatever you want. But we're going to show you how to draw your own plans and come up with your own design. And what's and the difference between the two, Mike? This is a more traditional style Tele bridge. Um, this is a more modern one. Another big difference is the material. Now, if you haven't used uh, an edge sander very much, you, it's probably worth practicing on before you dive right in to your template here. At least it's better to practice on your template than it is on the guitar. That's one good reason to make the template first. Another thing to consider here, if you're doing a, a, a mortise and tenon style joint like a traditional Les Paul where the tenon is a little narrower than the fingerboard, you probably want to keep this area. I leave a sixteenth inch gap right here between the end of the fingerboard and the beginning of the pickup cavity. And my pickup mounting ring is going to cover that gap right there. Now at this point I can remove the clamps. I'm done with my, my template. And again, this one, now I'm going to get the router back out. I'm going to continue routing all the way through, and my bearing at this point is just going to ride on the cavity that I've already cut. And don't forget to clean off your roller, otherwise you'll be very sad. The idea is to create a nice bevel, and I like to have it be nice and rounded over, so not anything sharp that meets here. You can check your progress with a straight edge of some kind to see how much material that you've taken off. So now I'm going to taper the fingerboards. The rosewood one, I'm going to actually use the neck template I made earlier, and I'm going to flush route the fingerboard with this. So I'm going to be marking some center lines on there, double stick taping it on here, and then routing it flush with the template. On this style neck, with the angled peg head and a set neck, traditionally you would have the rod be adjustable at this end for any of these styles. Now on a bolt-on neck, you can also have the neck, rather the truss rod, be adjustable at the opposite end. You can have it be adjustable down here. I'll talk a little bit about both ways of doing that. I've shown you a lot of different ways to install a truss rod. After you've built one or two, maybe then think about going on to the compression style rod. And I'll line this up with that. Actually, actually, I'm going to show you a, a little trick I like to do. In fact, that's, that's a lot easier to do, so I wanted to show you the more difficult way because if you can do this, you'll easily be able to figure out the other one, especially after you see me route the neck pocket for the Fender style guitar. Again, the fingerboard is going to sit right here flush on that surface. The tenon is going to be right in here. Now that's the angle I want to transfer onto my neck. With that fingerboard and neck glowing up, I'm going to transition now over to carving the top. There are a lot of ways to do that. You can take the long route and carve it all by hand. You can use some power tools. I'm going to show you several different ways here. I'll start out with some hand tools, use some power tools, and come back to some hand tools at the end probably. Here are our necks. Now the Next, we're going to get carved with the same, through the same process, but things are going to be a little different at the ends. Of course, this is a different, much different transition than this, and you'll you'll see the way that I blend those. I've got all my cavities marked out, and now I need to set the depth of cut uh, with my this cool precision router base I have. If you get did get a little deep, you can put a little extra amount in there, and then over here I've got a heat gun, and I'm going to heat up the joint just a little bit. You want to get the joint clamped up before the high glue gels. And the warmer it is, the warmer the room temperature is, the longer working time you have. Both sides nice and even. Again, now I'll take off top corners here and those corners. Now it's time to move on to the fret job. I'm going to start with the maple neck, which is a lot easier to do because it's not bound. And in general, the rosewood is a little easier to fret as well. First thing I, w I like to do is check the depth of the fret slots and make sure I haven't gotten too shallow, which is easy to do when you're radiusing and flattening your neck. And you want to be careful that you're not gouging your fingerboard here. With the fretwork done on both guitars, now I'd like to move on and set up the bridge position precisely where it's going to be on both of them as well. It's going to be a little different on each one. So I'm going to start with the carved top guitar. For the maple neck, I'm going to use a product called True Oil. It's a really nice oil finish. It's not a typical oil finish. It actually builds to a film. It's really durable. It's really easy to apply. It's a great finish. You can even do a whole guitar. I'm going to start with just plain water. Get everything wet. That's going to help things flow out. It's kind of my 
This is gonna kind of be my base coat. So the center is gonna be this nice golden and a honey amber. I'll work out progressively darker from there. Both finishes are finally leveled and ready to buff. This one's gonna get buffed to a high gloss. The top of this is gonna get buffed to a high gloss. I'm gonna do a satin finish on the back. There's a couple ways to do a satin finish. One is to use, after I'm done with the coarse wheel, I'll move up to medium, and then from there I'll go up to fine. In general, with the same gauge wire, the more winds you put on there, the more the hotter the pickup is gonna be, or the more output it's gonna have. From there I've got my action set. Now I need to adjust the intonation. I'm, I'm moving the saddle forward or backward to change the vibrating length of the string. For the carved top model, I created a template where the holes are spaced just like they are on the guitar, which allows me to do a lot of the soldering outside of the cavity rather than sticking my soldering iron down in there. Here we are, finally done. Two guitars completed. The carved top, the Tele style. I hope this gives you some inspiration and enough information to go out and start building on your own or continue building on your own. Happy building, guys. Good luck. Enjoy. Remember to have fun. <laughs>